We have been given the scientific knowledge, the technical ability, and the materials to pursue the exploration of the universe. To ignore these great resources would be a corruption of a God-given ability. 30 seconds and counting. My son is, he's always looking at when the next rockets are. And we got a chance to go out to uh, Canaveral and we saw Artemis on the launch pad. And he was so excited, he'd gone to bed, but my wife and I, we went and we, we woke him up and for him to see Artemis 1, this, this rocket that's going back to the moon, and to watch that go up at night was such a special moment to share with the family. Five, four. My grandfather was actually an engineer on multiple Apollo missions and Skylab missions and Mercury missions and he actually helped land humanity on the moon for the first time. Three, two... Growing up in India, we were all very enamored by what NASA was up to. I do see my, myself in my children because growing up, they have always been as excited about watching the launch or going to the uh, Kennedy Space uh, Visitor Center, and I can still see that excitement, uh, but we still talk about what's next. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things. One, zero. Not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Because that goal will serve to organize and measure the best of our energies and skills. Because that challenge is one that we're willing to accept. UCF was essentially established after President Kennedy's moonshot speech. Thanks for volunteering. 30% of NASA's workforce has gone through either our aerospace engineering program or our engineering management training program. So our college has really impacted the Kennedy Space Center. I grew up in the South Florida area in the 1960s and 70s timeframe during that Apollo era. I knew I wanted to be an engineer, but I wasn't really sure where I was gonna go with my engineering degree. And I walked on UCF's campus and I just loved it. I just felt at home here. And it just so happened at that time, the Kennedy Space Center was hiring. So I got hired and to start working with the space shuttle program and in operations, which I actually got to be in the launch control center for several of the shuttle operations. The excitement, the energy, the cheering. It reminds me of when we'd score a touchdown here at a football game. When that rocket launches, people just cheer. Our school motto is reach for the stars. So space is in every part of the DNA of, of this university. Right over the top of the stadium is Canaveral National Seashore and Kennedy Space Center. And the rockets go straight up, aligned with our 50-yard line as they go into space. The space games are an athletics platform to tell the space story of UCF. In 2017, that was our very first space game. It was just a, a few helmet decals and a mission patch. But space game is way more than just a game. You have so many people on this campus and in our fan base that this is their life is, is working in the, the space industry or in research. Uh, to then be able to come to a football game and feel celebrated, feel celebrated by the team of like what they're doing and, and, and how it matters for, for humankind, it's fantastic. The space game is perfect because it brings in our heritage. It brings in the heritage of what UCF is all about. It reminds us that we started with educating engineers and getting them in, involved in the space program. It brings together the newness of what's going on in space, all the innovation. Each year is a research project. I love how we still have the constellation pattern and the numbers, the Canaveral blue, the sleeves on our, our standard uniforms. We have our university seal of the Pegasus. So on the space uniforms, that's the Pegasus constellation that replaced the Pegasus logo. It brings my school, it brings my job, it brings my family with all of my family being here at UCF and now especially with Stephen being on the football team. My mom has inspired me a lot in what I do. She really encouraged me to get into math and science when I was a kid. Uh, that's why I'm studying computer engineering now, because of the background she gave me. Soon after she got out of college and worked in the uh, 
the space shuttle program. And uh, she was actually on the helmet from two years ago um, when they put the former UCF alumni on the helmet and their names. So it was a really cool moment for me to play with her name on my helmet. My ultimate goal for the space game is that uh, some kid out there is, is watching and sees UCF wearing these, these space uniforms and Space U, and that they learn about what UCF is doing, and, and, and they have dreams of, of going to the moon, going to Mars, sending rockets to space. They look at this football game and be like, man, Space U, UCF, that's, that's where I want to go to school. Whether you're connected through sports or space, everyone understands that if you're from UCF, we're all one family together. It was at my dream lab and I finally made it to NASA. And to see that come full circle from generation to generation to me is extremely special. So unfortunately, my grandfather passed when I was really young. The way I paid it back was I brought my grandfather's uh, Lockheed Martin hat and I set up my office and I was like, Papa, like, I know you're here and I did it. And after my first day of work, I called my grandma I just remember her saying, Papa would be so proud of you right now. He is so proud of you. He's looking down on you right now, and he just can't believe it. Many years ago, the great British explorer, George Mallory, who was to die on Mount Everest, was asked, why did he want to climb it? He said, because it is there. Well, space is there, and we're going to climb it. And the moon and the planets are there and new hopes for knowledge and peace are there. And therefore, as we set sail, we ask God's blessing on the most hazardous and dangerous and greatest adventure on which man has ever embarked. Thank you. That's interesting. I did not know Kennedy asked for God's blessings. That's a very, very poignant, a very important part of this. That wasn't for people then, it, it, it was for the future. That spirit is 100% alive today. Engineers are humans in their heart. They are just driven by trying to make life easier for everybody else. We do this not because it's easy, because it's hard. In 1968, we had a, an orientation session for the charter faculty and staff. I said to the group, I believe this university is being built in a unique place at a unique time in the history of America. And I also believe that this university, being a unique university, one day is going to be one of the leading universities in the nation. <laughs>